Diaper Revolution Part 2. Chapter 4, Rewired. I heard a faint voice. I couldn't understand it, nor could I recognize it. I felt a gentle touch on the back of my head. Someone was stroking my head. My mind immediately went to my mother being the cause of this action and the source of the voice. I remembered when I was in grade school, I wanted to stay up at night and watch just a little bit more TV. My mother was against it but granted me the privilege that one night. When I began to feel tired, sitting on that couch in front of the flashing box, I rested my head onto her lap and she would rub my head so gracefully. It made me want to go to sleep, and would have even if I wasn't tired, just because I knew I would have the most pleasant dreams ever. Um, mommy. I asked, opening my eyes and blinking a few times to clear my view. A faint giggle was let loose, along with an awakening comment. I'm sorry to say no, Terry. I knew that voice. And I remember not knowing who it was earlier. I've already played this round of match that voice. See Cynthia. I asked. I saw a figure in front of me. Its arm was reaching towards me and moving at the same rhythmic pattern as the feeling of the strokes. It was her. I could barely keep my eyes open for more than three seconds. I didn't know what she did to me, but I wasn't completely in the most stable state of mind. You're awake. Good. I was getting a little worried. How do you like your seat? My, seat. What did she mean? It took Cynthia asking me that question for me to realize I was in a chair, and tied up to it in fact. But that's not what she meant by, seat. My legs were bare, I could feel it, and my shoes were off. I shifted my waist around to hear a crisp noise, similar to that of foil but much more gentle, both on the ears and the skin. I looked down at my waist to see a white, cushioned garment hugging my body down below. It was all white as snow, except for the rainbow that took up most of the front. It could have also had one on the rear, but I couldn't see. Hell, there could have been a duck playing a guitar on the back for all I know. The sight of this thing on me snapped me out of my days more than a gallon of espresso ever would have. What? What is this? Let me go, now. I struggled as best I could, trying to wiggle my hands behind my back, and my legs tied to the front chair legs threw any loose end there could be. When I discovered my limbs were secure, I tried to hop around in my chair. I succeeded in doing so, but there wasn't much of any sort of result from it. And I knew that fact, I was just too enraged and embarrassed to admit it. I hopped around in my chair explosively, knocking over several things in doing so. I ended up hopping backwards and leaning my chair back on two of its four legs. I would have fallen down on my back if Cynthia hadn't grabbed the chair by one of the front legs and pulled it down to the ground. Calm down. I just want to help. She began to stroke my head once again and look down at me with a calming smile. I felt oddly at peace. I shook my head to get her hand off and glared at her as hard as I could, not wanting to reveal anything close to enjoyment from her actions. Yeah, you said the same thing for stabbing me in the back. Where the hell am I? Why am I tied up? And why the holy mother of God am I in this thing? I asked her every question I cared about, staring directly at her and nowhere else in the whole, cramped room. She kept that little smile going, and just looked back as though she wasn't worried. It was as if she thought she had everything under control, and didn't even consider the possibility of me calling the cops when this was over. It's okay. You're in an empty closet. It's the closet that used to store all the janitor's supplies, we never left the school. Despite my barking eyes and obvious mood, Cynthia tried again and again to try and stroke my head. But after two or three of her hands repeated journeyed down my head, I usually shook my head around to get it off, only delaying its continuation. You're tied up because you'd probably run away, but I can't let that happen. Well of course I'd run away. This is insane. If a puppy could talk, it would say the same thing when it gets taken to the vet. She replied with that same motherly smile. At that time, I really wished her facial expression changed. 
I would have preferred an angry face at some point. And you're wearing this, she stopped mid-sentence to walk behind me and wrap her arms around me from behind. Her embrace felt so warm and pleasant. Like it was where I was meant to be. I didn't struggle at all. I felt I should have, but I didn't see any proper reason to. Because how do you know whether or not you like it until you try? She said that in a more direct tone of voice instead of a questioning one. She sounded like my mother when I refused to eat my broccoli. Cynthia pressed something into my mouth while I was distracted by her words. A little plastic topper piece to a sip pie cup. She pressed her hand under my chin to lift up my head at her preferred angle, while holding the cup up to pour a river of warm milk into my mouth. It tasted good, I won't lie, but I didn't want to be any more humiliated than I already was, so I used my tongue to block the opening of the mouthpiece. You were right when you spoke up in class after Mr. Hen's announcement. It didn't make sense. None of this makes any sense if you think about it. Diapers wouldn't improve anything academic directly. And having no distractions from needing to go to the bathroom would only be replaced with the distractions of what you're feeling downstairs when you do go. I'm surprised that you were the only one to be outraged by this lack of reason to stand up and shout. Really I am. I heard and witnessed several other people mentioning similar things. But you were the only threat to all this. She kept holding up the cup and my head, so I couldn't speak. Cynthia must have noticed the milk's level wasn't dropping, because she pulled out the cup piece from my lips and unscrewed the entire top off. But why would dash was all I said before she took hold of my jaw and gently poured the milk into my mouth. I kept myself from drinking it by using my tongue and blocking my throat hole. But the milk kept rising and rising in my mouth. I knew I couldn't hold it back forever. Why would the school's teachers vote to enforce the policy? Why would the principal propose this change? Why would the school board allow this? Whatever questions you have, I'm sure I'll answer them. My mouth was filled, and she kept tilting that cup. The only way to not drink would to close my throat hole, but I had to breathe. If Cynthia had stopped there, I could have just held it in my mouth and breathed through my nose. But she kept adding more, and so bit by bit I began to drink. It tasted so sweet, like it wasn't just normal warm milk. She must have made it special. The teachers didn't enforce the policy. Only one teacher voted for it, and the rest were against it. But Mr. Hen and I counted a prepared ballot box with just enough yes and no's in it to allow the change while appearing like a good amount of the teachers didn't want to. Cynthia tilted the cup a great amount, pouring what was rest in the cup in me. I didn't have to drink it anymore. But I did. I gulped down the delicious substance was more than ready to accept more. I was hoping she had more. The principal proposed this change in the school's dress code, because our community was too small. I wasn't sure what she meant by that. Our town seemed large enough, even for a small one. Cynthia set the cup down on the floor and walked in front of me. Just as I suspected, that smile was still there. I don't mean community like houses and schools and neighbors. I mean a community of US. Cynthia took hold of her jeans, unbuttoned the top and pulled them down. She was wearing a diaper too. The same kind she put on me, all white with a rainbow on the front. Her pants had dropped to the ground, and once she stepped out of the little puddle of cloth, she sat on my. Why she did so, I'm still not sure. In such a small town, it can get lonely being the only one with this interest. I know that once some people try one of these on, they'll like it. When I found out Principal Hen wore adult diapers due to a bladder problem, I told him a made-up story about how I have to wear them too because I don't have any other choice, and that I come to school and go through life so embarrassed that I don't know what I'd do if anyone found out I wore them. Cynthia again began to stroke my head. I didn't fight it this time though. I wanted to. But I felt a little bit light-headed, and so I didn't feel comfortable shaking my head around. It wasn't the worst thing to feel. And she wasn't hurting me. 
he bought it pretty easily. And wearing them himself, he suddenly felt more embarrassed than usual. When the time was right, I told him about a little plan to make it so we weren't the minority at this school or in this town. You are right, diapers won't help any students here. But they won't hurt any students either. And with diapers being mandatory, no one would be made fun of for them since everyone would wear them. Because, as I hope you know, anyone who violates the school dress code is suspended. Something didn't feel right. I felt so at ease and satisfied. A little too much, actually. And the school board? Same reason they'd allow anything, bribery or blackmail. My plan is perfect, Terry. Everyone wins. Principal Hen feels secure, the grades and scores of the school students will be about the same, and I'll get some new friends. There's bound to be some people my age who would like these too. Take you for example. Doesn't this feel soft? Cynthia pressed a hand down on the rainbow that was bonded to me. The cushioning feel felt so wonderful. My waist felt so enwrapped and my skin so pampered. I couldn't help but let out a faint gasp of air when a wave of warmth engulfed my lower region. My face felt warm as well, once I realized what I was doing. See? You're smiling. And don't think I can't feel what you're doing. She said in a slightly smug, but still concerning tone. I guess my special milk relaxed you quite a bit, huh? Cynthia's hand, pushing against the fading rainbow pressed the liquid warmth against my skin. I had no choice but to feel this experience of comforting confinement to the fullest. Shut up, I said as loudly as I could, which was nowhere close to my normal level of volume. Cynthia took her hand away and leaned in close. With her head hovering right next to mine, I thought this was another hug. But as I felt my wrists behind my back loosen, I realized she was letting me go. Huh. What are you dash? I only wanted you to try it. And now we know. She got off my lap and untied my ankles. She even let out a hand to help me up. Cynthia may just be the nicest kidnapper in history. I took her hand and pulled myself up, almost falling back down immediately. Whoa, take it easy. Your body is still a little loosey-goosey. She giggled after commenting about my body's current state. Hey, do you remember how I said this used to be a janitor's closet? It's not anymore because this room is going to be one of the storage rooms for the education-enhancing pads. I have one here. You can wear it if you want. If you don't then I'll give you back your underwear along with your pants. They're both right outside this door. Cynthia held up a plain, blue disposable diaper and handed it to me. The sound of the school's bell going off was the first thing I hear once the pad was in my hand. Cynthia took hold of my shoulders and looked up at me. I didn't realize until then that she was half a foot shorter than me. Third period is about to start. You should change yourself before going to class. And don't worry, I made sure you were excused for your first and second classes. Cynthia put on her pants and opened the door, letting in some light to the shadowy little space. She then used her foot to push in my pants and my panties. I remember when I put those on. They were my favorite pair, with those little cartoon storm clouds with cute, pouty faces on them. Wait a minute, so you. Undressed me. To the bare skin. Cynthia giggled awkwardly at my sudden realization. I'm sorry, about all of this really. But this was something I felt I had to do. I should have slapped her across the face. I should have called the police and had her hauled off. But I didn't do any of that. Just get out of here you pervert. I screamed and pointed out the door. I felt that warm sensation over my face again as I glared once again at the strange girl. Looking at Cynthia, I saw her as a tiny bit upset. She didn't have that smile that I assumed was everlasting. I looked down at the clean diaper in my hand and back up at what I could of her as the door began to close. Wait, she stopped and turned around, widening my view of her by opening the door. Do you? Have any more with rainbows on them? 
I hated asking that. But I honestly wanted to know. Plus, seeing that annoying smile on Cynthia's face come back sort of made it worth it, I guess. Oh, yeah. I do. She reached for her backpack that was out of my view and pulled out a folded diaper with that happy rainbow on it. I took it gratefully. Thank you. Don't forget your cup. Cynthia looked at me like she was confused, but then realized what I meant and reached down to pick up her pieces of plastic. I'll talk to you later. Hurry up now, we have some work to do when you're ready. She left with that comforting smile on her face, and closed the door. Once she was gone, I sat down on the chair with a squish. I looked down at the happy rainbow and grinned, actually looking forward to the rest of the school year for the first time in my life. Chapter 5, Changing I sat in my assigned seat, crinkling my newly strapped diaper. The teacher began to babble on about nothing while I was lost in a daze. Did all of that really just happen? Did Cynthia just come out to me as planning all of this just do find some people to share her interest? I assumed it was some sort of hallucination or lucid daydream, and that I've really been attending class this morning without thinking it. But every little crinkle and crackle I heard brought me back to reality. Cynthia wanted this. And she made it happen, whether or not others were curious or willing. I don't know if that's admirable or creepy as hell. But I did have to admit, I was a little respective towards her for actually following through with something instead of lying about and rotting away like everyone else at this school. The school intercom knocked me out of thought. Mr. Hen was heard clearing his throat before speaking. Attention students and teachers, please report to the auditorium for a special assembly. Attendance is mandatory. Thank you. I got up and out of my seat once the announcement processed in my head. I figured the more time in the assembly, the less time in class. That was all the thought I needed to instinctively get up. Although once I did, I immediately wanted to sit back down. I had no idea how noticeable my new fashion statement was. I quickly looked around myself to see if anyone was seeing through me. No student looked odd but I did by turning my head every which way. This must have been how Cynthia felt at every point of suspicion. I walked along with my class to the cafeteria, worrying all the way. Each sound I made was immediately known by me, but no one else. Have you ever tried walking through a house while everyone is asleep, and suddenly every noise you make sound a thousand times louder? Moments like those are the only thing I could hope to compare to this. The classes were told to sit wherever they pleased. That being said, I sat alone in the back. None of the groups of people really looked. Easy to tolerate to me. More classes came into the echoing room, and soon every attending student was prepared for whatever we were here for. Right as I saw Mr. Hen walk up to a prepared microphone in the centre of the stage, Cynthia plopped down next to me. Hey there, she whispered excitedly. Are you as anxious as I am? About what? I don't even know what this is for. I replied, not giving too much of an effort to be quiet. Hello students. I'm sure you're all wondering why you are here. Mr. Hen proclaimed. You don't remember? Yesterday, when it was announced what the winning vote was, Principal Hen mentioned Dash, Cynthia stopped mid-sentence once Sarah sat down to my left and greeted me. Hey a girl. Who you talking to? She asked. I'm Cynthia, and you? She dropped her smile a bit at the sight of Sarah. That fact alone scared me. Sarah. I'm Terry's girl, huh Terry? I turned to her, about to agree. But as I did so, I noticed Cynthia appear even more perturbed. How do I know that word? Whatever. She looked uneasy. W what? Her girl. Cynthia asked. We probably should have been paying attention to the principal. We were missing every word he said. Yeah, we've been the bestest friends for Everest since fifth grade. Sarah added. Oh. Friends, huh? 
she seemed a tiny bit happier just then. I wasn't sure what to make of it. Was she bipolar? Yeah. Though I haven't been a very good one. I still need to find Terry Man of her own, isn't that right? Sarah flashed a cheeky smile at me. She knew how much talk like that bugged me. For the last time, stop trying to hook me up. I'm not interested in any of the guys here. They're immature, and they can't accomplish the simplest of tasks to save their life. And that is why, students, Principal Hen exclaimed through the speakers, a bit louder than usual, I'm guessing, to retain the lost focus of some students. That this new policy will be enforced. If you'll all direct your attention to this education-enhancing pad, he held up one of those blue and simple diapers. These are exactly what you'll be wearing. They come in many sizes and go by the same sizing process as underwear. The new policy is simple, you wear these under your pants, PR shorts, or skirts or whatever when you come to school. Bathrooms will be locked up and off-limits entirely. And if anyone is caught not wearing one of these during school hours, then the school nurse will personally put one on you, and your trousers of any kind will be confiscated for the rest of the day. Is that understood? Mr. Hen really seemed prepared for this. Oh God, this is gonna sue you. Sarah said, almost at normal volume. How can they do this to us? What did we do to deserve this? I don't know why, but I reacted to Sarah's question. Well, because our scores and grades suck. So they are desperate to try anything. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was basically pointing myself out as a person worth of suspicion. Sarah looked at me with a disturbed look. What? Well yeah, we're doing bad. But that doesn't mean they can do this. How can you be on their side? You of all people. Cynthia took my hand in hers just then. I didn't think much of it, really. It seemed she was being nice to her new friend. I think she's just pointing a fact, Sarah. That is why they said they were doing it. She mentioned. But it's still not a good enough reason. Sarah, calm down. I said to her. It won't be so bad. You. Might even like it. She looked even worse at me at that claim. What? Why the hell would I do that? Anyone who likes to wear those things is a gross and sick freak. And don't you dare say I'll be like that Terry. Cynthia tightened her grip on my hand and hung her head down. It was then that I saw why she went to great lengths for her plan. Sarah noticed Cynthia was looking unwell, and leaned over her armrest to close in on her. Hey girl, are you Oka, okay? what are you doing? Sarah saw Cynthia holding my hand, and pulled it off. Girl, what are you doing? Don't be thinking she's like that. Terry knows which side of the fence she's on. Sarah. I said in an annoyed tone. That's not what she was doing. She just. Wanted a little comfort. Comfort? Yeah. See, she's really upset about all the new dress code crap. And she gets embarrassed, easy. So I've been helping her out and trying to cheer her up, is all. Sarah just looked at us funny for a moment. When Cynthia nodded to confirm my statement, Sarah continued on with me. Is that where you were last night? Talking to her. Ah. Sort of. I wasn't lying. A man appeared on the stage. Someone in a black suit, with a stern look on his face. He approached Mr. Hen and whispered in his ear. Oh okay students. Something requires my attention for the moment, he looked worried all of a sudden. Like he was told there was a bomb in the school or something. You are all excused from class today. Go home, all of you. And that didn't help me feel any better. Mr. Hen walked away with the man who seemed to appear very serious at the time. All the students hopped up and cheered at the fact that they were set free. Like they didn't even care that they were going to be forced into the new policy, among other things. Cynthia let go of my hand and stood up. I have to go. 
I'll see you later, Terry. She seemed concerned. I should have asked what was wrong. Sarah tapped her finger on my shoulder and muttered to me quietly. Be careful around her, Terry. Something's up. She's got a thing for you, and I don't want to see my girl being any crazy bitch Les Chow. She looks, Sarah stopped flapping her mouth to sniff around a bit. Do you smell that? W what? No, I don't. And Sarah, she's not crazy. And what makes you think she's gay? Well she's liking being so close to you after just meeting you. And she looked a little disappointed when she got up and left. Look, I don't mind if you're on that side of the fence dash. Sarah. I yelled right in her face. All I'm saying is don't get anyone too clingy or too fast. Okay. I'm gonna go see if Mike's got any plans for the day. I'll see you later. Sarah walked away to spend some time with her boyfriend of the week, and I just grabbed my bag with the intent of heading home. At my locker, I pulled out my science book and put it in my bag. It always annoyed me that the cover of the book had smiling kids staring at magnets, because you just know that there is no chance of any student actually being amazed to see magnet stick. If they were going to stage a picture, they could at least stage a convincible one. I heard the sound of footsteps to my right, echo and bounce all about in the hallways. I looked out of curiosity, and saw Cynthia, alone and coming towards me. Oh hey, what's up? Why are you still here? Forget your homework too. I asked to her before she was within five feet of me. She still had that look, but even worse. She looked as though she lost something, or someone. Are you okay? You seem down. She nodded her head a bit, and walked closer. She didn't say a thing at first, it scared me more than seeing her in front of me while I was bound to a chair. Terry. I closed the locker door and picked up my bag as I faced her. Yeah. Can um, we, spend a little time together today? I think I could use a pick-me-up. What? Why? What happened? Her head jumped up a little as she answered, I could see her eyes were a little red. Nothing, I mean, nothing. Please Terry. I couldn't bear to say no, and it's not like I had anything else to do for the rest of the day. I gave a little sigh and took a step towards her with my arms open. I wrapped my arms around her a little tightly and snug. I will if you do me a favor. I purposed. Yeah sure, what? I hesitated a bit, unable to really ask what I wanted to. I didn't have much experience talking or asking things like this yet. Can I have another one of those rainbow ones? I, really, like them. I lowered my face into her shoulder out of embarrassment like I just asked my parents or something, even if only Cynthia and I were there. She giggled a little under her breath and hugged me back. You can have as many as you'd like, Terry. After I changed in the bathroom, or the soon-to-be changing room, we walked towards and out the school's front door. Before the sunlight had a chance to hit us, Cynthia took my hand again and leaned her head onto my shoulder. She seemed so upset, I didn't mind letting her do what she needed to brighten up. On our way down the steps, I saw Mr. Hen and that black-suited man, as well as a few policemen with their cars parked and flashing. I didn't know what they were concerned about, other than the fact that it probably had something to do with the school's new dress code. I didn't care though, I just wanted to see Cynthia smile again. It was all I could think about. I decided to walk Cynthia to a nearby ice cream shop, hoping it would help. As I did so, Sarah's words played back again and again in my head. Maybe Cynthia was on that side of the fence. And she did say she was lonely because of her interest. I never really considered myself dating another girl. Not that it bothered me, I just didn't. But I guess it wouldn't to try something new. That brisk noise being made under my jeans was a testament to that. Cynthia and I were only friends for about a day or so. Maybe we weren't ever friends when I think about it. Even if there was a time when we were, we were also something at least a little bit more that was worth mentioning. 
Cynthia and I went to the ice cream shop like I mentioned earlier, but it didn't stop there. After we did, we felt like catching a movie and hanging out afterwards. She refused to tell me what was bothering her earlier, but I found out the next day. The fixed voting and about half of the persuasion tactics to get the board members to overlook a few things had been discovered. Mr. Hen lost his job and the new school policy was thrown away before anyone got a chance to wear their new education enhancing pads. I'm not sure what she was upset about, that no one else would wear diapers like she wanted, or that what she did got a man, who only wanted to help, fired. Either way, she was happy enough to smile more than anyone else would in three lifetimes. She was a naturally cheery person, and any day she had anything less than a smile was a bad one for me. She always cheered me up and I always comforted her when she felt ashamed for her, our, interest. We just fit together. I guess that's why it was so easy to get down on one knee for her. It's been seven years since the whole dress code hoopla, and I've never felt happier than when I'm with her. We even have a child now. We went to a clinic and used some donated sperm. She wanted me to use it, but I insisted our child have a part of her. Her name is Haley, and she's four years old. We decided not to potty train her until she's older and can decide for herself if she really wants to be or not. So far, she seems to have her mother's fascinations. The event at Grenley High changed many relationships. A few people had fights. Some respected each other more. Even some people lost their friends once they moved away at the beginning of the whole ordeal. It was also frustrating to the unlucky few, but nowhere near as frustrating as the school year after that for Cynthia and I, but that's another story. In the end, Cynthia got what she wanted. She didn't want to be alone. And now she never will be, so long as I can help it.